everyone. And a very warm welcome to our service of worship here in Drumliga. And on your behalf, and on behalf of the Kirk Session and Congregation, we give a very uh, warm and Drumliga welcome uh, to you, uh, your grace. And we thank you for coming to our service today. And we know that you were all able to attend the opening of the new hall. And so it's lovely that you're able to be with us today. And at the end of the service, His Grace will say a few words. Uh, of greetings to the congregation. So with those words of welcome, we turn now to worship God. Jesus said these words, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So let's worship God as we worship him together. We're going to stand and sing number 95 in your church hymn, number 95, and there you find the lovely hymn, in Christ alone. So let's stand as we worship God together. Out for the sinner. 
we realize that though we cannot reach up to the heights of your glory, in mercy you have reached down to us in Jesus, who came to seek and to save the lost. We praise you for Jesus, and we put our hope in Christ alone, for life and for death. We praise you for your mercy that cleanses us from our sin. We praise you for your Spirit. And we pray that we would know your Holy Spirit with us in this service, so that our eyes would be fixed on Jesus. We praise you for your people gathered here today. We thank you for your love for each one of us. We thank you for this time that we set aside to worship you on this your day. Heavenly Father, you are the source of all love. You are the source of all life. You are the source of all wisdom. And so we praise you. And as we praise you, we pray that you would forgive us for our foolishness, our foolish actions, our foolish words, and for those times that we have not glorified you, and for those times that we have withdrawn help and love and care to others. And so change us. And make us more like Jesus in our thinking, with our words, and in our deeds. So, Lord, we join our voices together now as we say the words that Jesus taught his disciples. And so we say with one voice Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The choir are now going to sing a lovely hymn for us today, Behold our God. And so the choir will lead us in our praises of God. Thank you.
before we have our offering, a few announcements. Uh, this evening we have Drolinga Orange Lodge uh, coming here uh, for their service at 7 p.m. and their supper afterwards. And I'm sure they won't mind if you join uh, the service at 7 p.m. Everyone uh, welcome. We have our church barbecue on Friday evening. Uh, the food has been all organized and good weather has been ordered. And we look forward to that. Please do sign up in the vestibule or let Flora know or send me an email and we need numbers by tomorrow at least. So we're looking forward to our barbecue. Oma show next Saturday. We're looking forward to that. Uh, from Liga and Mountjoy, we're having a stall there. We're not selling anything. And we I produce little booklets that tell people about our church, our services, and what we offer. And I need people to help me give out those 500 books. So all you have to do is put on a lovely smile and give out the book. And you never know, uh, there could be someone sitting in church here, uh, all because you gave them a little booklet. So if you want to help, and if you could just do an hour, that would be great. And then sure you have the rest of the afternoon to go around the stands and look at the animals and the horses and the sheep and everything else. So I'm doing my bit to promote Over Show and Romania Church. Next Sunday we meet at 10 a.m. and then after that we have joint services. The first two, the next two Sundays will be in Drumliga and the last two Sundays in July. I will be on holidays uh, from the 4th of 5th of July, but I'll be here next Sunday. I think that's all by way of announcements, but to say that everyone is welcome to stay for tea and coffee and scones and biscuits and other sweet treats in the hall uh, after the service. But we worship God as we bring our offering to the Lord this morning. Do you like pizza? 
Right, what's your favourite kind of pizza? Ham and pineapple? Pepperoni? What's your favourite? Cheese. Cheese. Well, I have a pizza here. Well, sorry, I have a pizza box here. There's a difference, isn't there? So, you can buy other pizzas. There are other places, but Domino's. And you open up the box, and you get your lovely pizza. Look, oh, it's all gone. And if, who ate it? It was Alice who ate it. <laughs> and you know what? Alice said someday when she gets married at her wedding reception, she's going to have pizza for everyone. <laughs> Time enough yet, Alice, for a long number of years. But the pizza, maybe you could have pizza at your wedding too. But what would happen if you just ate pizza every day? Say you ate pizza Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. When, would that be a good thing to eat every day? Why, why would it not be good? What do you think, Louis? You, get sick of it. you would get sick of it, yes. <laughs> and it wouldn't be good for you. Sure it wouldn't. It wouldn't be good to eat pizza every day. What should what do we call when you eat different kinds of food every day? Do you know maybe you have an apple or some bananas or some potatoes, some vegetables, some bread, some scones, some pizza, some turkey, some beef? What do you call that kind of diet? And if you don't know, I'll have to go to the choir. What do you call it? It's where you have all the right amount of things that is called a... Balance. A balanced diet. And that's where you eat pizza, but then you have to eat... something like an apple then to make it... good. What would happen if you just ate an apple every day and you ate nothing but apples? Would that be good for you? No. So you need everything, and you need chocolate as well. And you need biscuits, and you need fruit, and you need vegetables, and you need chicken. I don't eat that. <coughs> Pardon? I don't eat that. Oh, no. Well, you kind of do need these things. You need a little bit of everything to be balanced a balanced diet. And we're going to be thinking today in church about balance and what someone came to Jesus and said Jesus what's the most important commandment and Jesus said the most important commandment is love the Lord your God and then love other people so we need to do the two of them we need to love God and then we need to love other people it would be no good if we just loved God and then didn't love other people that wouldn't be balanced or if we just loved other people and didn't love God so we need the two we need to love God first and then love other people. That's a balanced Christian life. So you remember that. What's the most important thing in life is to love God first and then to love other people. So you remember that. The next time you have a pizza with ham and pineapple, that is kind of balanced, isn't it? There's a bit of fruit and a bit of vegetables and the meat, cheese. You need to put some sweet corn on that. Pepperoni, you would need a bit of banana. <laughs> well, let's pray. Father of all, we do thank you for our children as they get their holidays from school. May you watch over them during the summer. May you bless them, keep them safe. Be with our teachers and classroom assistants and all who work in our schools. We thank you for the gift of education. And may everyone know rest and relaxation over the summer months. And help us always to love the Lord Jesus and then to love others. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go back and join your families and we're going to sing our next hymn. And it's in the white hymn book, number 162. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. 162.
last week the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in Ireland had met at Assembly Buildings in Belfast, where representatives of the 550 Presbyterian Churches uh, met to discuss a wide range of uh, items. And I'm not going to give you a blow-by-blow -blow account of what happened. Uh, instead, I'm going to hand over to Morris Adams. Morris was... No, I'm not. Morris was a representative. <laughs> Morris was our representative elder and uh, there with me uh, during the week. Our new moderator is uh, Dr. Sam Mowinney. And Sam grew up in Valley Castle. He trained as a doctor and served in Uganda and then came back and trained as a minister and spent all of his parish ministry in the Republic of Ireland in Presbyterian Church in Vermoy and also uh, latterly in Adelaide Road in Dublin. He chaired the meetings with grace and very uh, capable man and with fairness and with great uh, godliness. Some of the reports uh, or numbers of Presbyterians are declining like other religions uh, in Western Europe and uh, while we might feel we're strong here in Drumliga and Mountjoy, uh, many churches uh, the decline there has been over, I think, 4,000 families have uh, drifted away uh, in the last year or two. So that has an impact. And many churches are small and with uh, small numbers of church uh, members attending some churches. Uh, there was a decision taken to close three Presbyterian churches, Wexford Presbyterian Church, Waterford Presbyterian Church, and Ballymote Presbyterian Churches, where the numbers attending it was not viable uh, with five or six, seven people attending worship. So those churches have closed after 400 years, which is a sad day for those churches. But our church will be uh, starting new work in that area, church planting. The church is growing in the Republic of Ireland. There are five new churches in the Republic of Ireland and three more, two or three more plans uh, for the year ahead. So there is growth in some places. We talked about education and um, we as a church are heavily involved in education. We started schools, our ministers, our boards of governors and while many people in the media and others would want to take the church out of schools, we want to stay in schools because children matter to God. And someone said, we don't do religion in schools, we do faith, we do Christianity. And so we want to keep their doors of our schools open uh, so that ministers and there can be a Christian influence in our schools. There was a report brought to the General Assembly uh, for those people who we would classify as uh, intellectually disabled, that they can come to the Lord's table in the same way that you or I can come. And while they might not be able to make vows verbally, we want to include them and we want to affirm them and welcome them into our church. Our church has uh, 15 care homes. There's one in Oma, Harold Macaulay. And we, every night there are 373 people cared for by the Presbyterian Church in a care home. And so, uh, through your work to the United MP, we are able to support chaplains, military chaplains, army chaplains, hospital chaplains, prison chaplains, and so many other areas out in civic society that we support. We're now going to watch a very short report on a church in Syria, Aleppo, a Presbyterian church. And through your giving, you're able to support the church, the Presbyterian church in Syria. We can meet today in freedom, but they, it's just not maybe, this, while it's safe, it's, uh, it's a different culture in a different context. And so we'll watch this short video for two or three minutes. This is the Presbyterian Church of Aleppo that belongs to the National Synod of Evangelical Churches in Syria and Lebanon, which was established in 1848 as an outcome of the missionaries who came from Europe and later on from the United States. The worship services every Sunday morning, we receive almost 250 to 300 people. Usually we have Sunday schools, who can do different type of activities, and they are almost 200 child. The Sunday school is bringing very positive impact over our society. We teach people 
not only spiritually, but also uh, socially. The same can be implemented to our teenager group and to youth group. The church has also ladies meeting, which includes almost 150 ladies. The most important ministry, I believe, which goes in harmony with our heritage, spiritual heritage with the missionaries, is education. The new generation school that includes this for this academic year, 1,315 students. We teach them from kindergarten to baccalaureate. We encourage teaching girls. We try always to receive everybody, no care for their religion. Again, we go to our harmony with our history. We go to the clinic center. We receive almost 3,000 patients per month with 30 specialists who try always to offer the people the care they needed and even sometimes the medicine for free. The clinic center and the church are doing great job, especially in the time of the earthquake where catastrophe was impacted the whole society. We were there for everybody. Again, the church played very important role in the relief work. We offered blankets, we offered mattresses, we offered food baskets, hygiene baskets, even ready to eat, and sometimes medical care. We wanted to help everybody because we knew that the marginalized people are the most interested category for our Lord Jesus Christ. We distributed money, we distributed food baskets, we distributed everything we could do for the glory of God, always. مرحبا انا اسمي ولاء مربية ايتام عندي ثلاث اطفال صغار توفى جوزي بالحرب والوضع يعني يرسى له ابني يعني فقد بصره بالزلزال ورجع الحمد لله الفضل الله, الله بعد المعاينة يعني مشي حاله شوي فنحن بحاجة دعم يعني بحاجة انه الوضع المأساوي كتير صعب كتير بتمنى انه يصل صوتنا من فضل الكنيسة الإنجيلية إنه يصلنا شوية دعم لنحسن وضع المعيشة أنا أطفالي صغار ويعني بناشد كل العالم والجهات المختصة بهالموضوع إنه أنا أكبر طفل عندي إدعاء السنة ووضعي أبدا صعب وبتشكر الكنيسة الإنجيلية اللي عم تساعدنا وواقفة معنا وعم تسمع صوتنا وحاسة فينا وبأطفالنا عم تقدم لنا الدواء والمعونات والله يعطيهم ألف عافية عن جد شكرا كثير لهم. The Presbyterian Church will go on in its ministry. And you can be part of it. The church is a global church everywhere. The Presbyterian Church of Aleppo is inviting you through the National Synod of Evangelical Churches to be our partners in serving the schools and the students, in serving through the clinic center, in serving with the spiritual dimension that is very important for us. Here, we will continue to be a living testimony that talks about the presence of Jesus Christ in Syria in general and in Aleppo. Stones are not able to talk, but living stones are always proclaiming Jesus Christ as a savior for a humanity. Thank you very much. I think we'll go ahead and pray when we watch something. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy, that we can come here without fear or persecution. We're not at risk, I don't think, of an earthquake or natural disaster. We thank you for our church here in Ireland, the Presbyterian Church, as it bears witness to your love. And so we pray for our new moderator, Reverend Dr. Sam Mobile, as he begins his year as monitor, moderator of our church. Guide him as he speaks in your name and on our behalf. Bless him and use him for your glory. For every congregation from Ballycastle to Cork, from Ballina to Arklow, 
May you build up your church in this meadows. We thank you for our church's involvement in schools, nursing homes, prisons, hospitals, armed forces, and in so many areas. We thank you for the work that is done to those who are last and least and needy, the vulnerable in our society. And may you continue to give all that is needed so that your people are helped and blessed. Beyond our congregation today, we remember the church in Lebanon and Syria. If it wasn't civil war, there is natural disaster. And we pray that with thanksgiving for your church in that land and the blessing uh, that it has been to so many people in the midst of destruction caused by this earthquake and war. We thank you for the people in that church as they bear witness to Jesus Christ and his love. We thank you for that church. They inspire us and we, we, we just marvel at their resilience. And so, Heavenly Father, we remember today Russia and the situation that is evolving there with Mr. Lord, we look to you to guide the nations of the world in your ways. And may the leaders of the world seek first your kingdom and all other things be added unto them. So Lord, hear our prayers because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand to sing with that attitude of prayer, hymn number 13, Beauty for Brokenness. So let's worship God.
We're in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 1. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 1. This is God's Word. Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. Simon and his brother Andrew, James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Patriot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These twelve men were sent out by Jesus with the following instructions. Do not go to any Gentile territory or any Samaritan town. Instead, you are to go to the lost sheep of Israel. Go and preach, the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, bring the dead back to life. Heal those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases and drive out demons. You have received without payment, so give without being paid. And we end there in verse 8, asking that God would add a blessing to his word. Amen. A disciple. What is a disciple? Well, last week we said a disciple is called. Someone that Jesus calls to come and follow him. And today we're going to be thinking that a disciple is balanced. We're all familiar with balanced diets. Now, while the children may not know about balanced diets, I think we all know that it's not good to eat pizza every day. Equally, it's not good to eat just vegetables all the time. You need other things. Those among us that play golf, you know, our captain from Newton Stewart is here, I'll keep me right, but when you go to play golf, you need the right balance. You don't want to be leaning one way or the other way, you need the right balance. Otherwise, the ball's not going to go where you want it to go. I think that's my problem, just to be in this off balance. I'm always amazed in a restaurant how those waiters can carry plates up their arms and they can balance and weave in and round tables and carry these plates balanced. We always want our bank accounts to be balanced, that the income matches the outcome or the outcomes. And what about the tightrope walkers at the circus? I'm always amazed at how they do it. And is it all about balance? And if they lose their balance, well, there's only one way to go. Down. A Mars a day, the strap line used to be, a Mars a day helps you work, rest, and play. And isn't that so true? Now, again, you can't eat other bars of chocolate. <laughs> but we do need to work. We do need to rest. We do need to play. What would happen if you just work, work, work? And what would happen if you just play, play, play? You do need balance, work, rest, and play. And when we turn to the Bible, we see our God is a God of balance. He created the world, night and day, summer and winter. It's all there in God's character. We have God's wrath, but we also have God's mercy. We have God's justice, where justice has to be carried out, but there is God's grace. So God is a God of balance, wrath and mercy, love and justice. We see balance in Jesus' life. He worked and he rested. We read of Jesus resting, sleeping. We read of Jesus working. Teaching, healing the sick, feeding the hungry. We have Jesus rebuking people for their sin. But we have Jesus being gracious to them. The balance. We have Jesus alone in prayer. And then we have Jesus with others. Jesus lived a life of balance. And even when, we, when Jesus taught the Lord's Prayer, there is a physical, give us today our daily bread. The spirit, then the, the Spirit will forgive us our sins. Our Father in heaven, your will be done on earth. There is the balance. So we need to be people who are balanced. 
And in our verses here this evening, a disciple is someone who there's that balance between being an individual and belonging to a community. Jesus called the twelve disciples, and their names are all there. There's James and Andrew and John and Thomas, the, the list of the twelve. Jesus list they're listed here in Matthew's Gospel because names are important. You're not just a group, you're an individual. And in our world today, where you phone someone, they don't want your name, they want your number. Have your reference number. Have your codes. But we are people first and foremost. And God, through His Son, the Lord Jesus, calls individuals. And that's by their name. And He calls you to Himself. But He never called these individuals, these disciples, to stay on their own. He called them to be together. The band of twelve. Jesus called the twelve disciples to him. No man is an island, we would say. We need each other. And so we belong to Christ. And Christ calls us individuals, but he calls us to belong to his family, the church. And there's a balance between being called to Jesus and then being with the followers of Jesus. Wouldn't it be good if we all stayed at home today? Or if we all lived as hermits? That isn't what the Bible teaches. So we need to get that balance. We're called as individuals and we're called to belong together. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him. And then Jesus sent the disciples out from him. He calls people, they spend time with them, and then they go back out. And there's the balance between worship, being with Jesus, and then working for Jesus. Jesus called the twelve disciples to him. People coming to Jesus, worshipping Jesus, listening to Jesus, spending time with Jesus. And then they're sent out, the twelve were sent out. And we are sent out to live for Jesus in our ordinary, everyday lives. And so when the benediction is pronounced and we go out into the world, we're going to sent out to live for Jesus. And what are, we, what are we doing here? We're coming to Jesus to worship Him. And there's that balance. What would happen if I didn't pronounce the benediction today? And we just stayed here to next Sunday. That's not what these verses tell. We're called to Jesus and then we're sent out from Jesus. And in these verses we have the balance between the physical and the spiritual. Jesus said to his disciples, as you go, preach that the kingdom of heaven has come near. So they were to tell people about the kingdom. And they were inviting people to come into the kingdom of God and tell them all about God's love for them and His grace. That what else were they to do? So he sent them out, he told them, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. They were to put into practice what they heard when they were with Jesus. You know what it said that some people can be so heavenly minded that they're of no earthly use. If all that we are focusing on is heaven and we don't care about anyone else, we're out of balance. Isn't that the story of the good Samaritan? He knew to love God and then he showed that love to others. What did Jesus say? The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is like it to love your neighbor. Loving God first, then loving others. We need that balance in life. You have to bring your car and get the steering aligned because it maybe isn't balanced. And if your steering isn't balanced, you're going to go left or you're going to go right. People who suffer from vertigo, it's all to do about balance. And they can wobble. What happens if we don't? If we focus so much on the physical and neglect the spiritual? What happens if we neglect God and are more concerned about people? We get out of balance. 
And to use a good phrase from round here, you'll be out of kelter. <coughs> you will be lopsided. And that's never good. So we are to be balanced in all things. And where do we go to find balance? We go to the cross. Because of the cross, we see God's wrath and we see God's mercy and they meet at the cross. We should have been punished for our sin. We should have experienced God's wrath. But instead, Christ took all our sin upon himself and faced God's wrath and judgment. And instead, we get grace and we get mercy. That is the most balanced place that you will find. And we need to go there. It is at the cross that we are set free. Calvary is a great place of balance. So may we live balanced lives. Loving the Lord with all our heart. And showing that love to others. Amen. We stand to sing our concluding praise. And the words are on the PowerPoint screen for this hymn. And use this as you respond to God's word. Come thou out of every lesson.
pleasure and in honor to be present here today. And I'm most grateful to Reverend Jonathan Cohen for his invitation to attend my neighbor's church service. Clearly, the parishes of my joy and drum neighbor are robust, healthy, confident, and fulfilled under the excellent stewardship of the Reverend Jonathan Cohen. After service, I am indeed looking forward to looking at the renovated church hall further. I have a quick beat before the service, and if Baron's Court State can be of any help at all in helping to raise further funds, I believe we're left for 120 or 150 thousand. We're at your disposal. I well remember attending that memorable evening at Mount Jolly in May last year while celebrating the Platinum Jubilee for the late Queen, prior to her sad, sad departure last September. However, as you all know, she left behind a remarkable legacy of total integrity, selflessness, and concern for all her subjects. She never courted popularity, but she was without doubt one of the most popular, respected, and admired personalities on this planet. Despite the constant and negative news that we hear all this day, the wonderful recent weather surely reminds us all that we're just so fortunate to be living and working in a countryside of great beauty, free from urban congestion, where the importance of a family is still paramount, and Sunday is still a day of, of, of worship. Whilst last April was the 25th anniversary of a Good Friday Agreement, which gave us all a real hope for a better future, we were all aware that this agreement has still a long journey to travel, but the children of today enjoy a safety and security that those of us who lived through previous decades could no decree of living. Of course, we still have major challenges living here in the west of the province, with real pressures on the health service. And again, there's no doubt that our chronic growth system is holding back serious progress. But surely there must be a day, sooner than later, when urban commuters can safely travel to Belfast on a daily basis if required. This is indeed a common practice throughout the United Kingdom and should indeed apply to Western province. Once again, I would like to sincerely thank you all for such a really warm welcome today and I'm just so very, very grateful. Thank you. <laughs>